can learn from this period that David maintained his consciousness of God's presence. He maintained his connection with God's people. Finally, he maintained his confidence in God's promise. David realized that I must look to the Lord himself until he brings my destiny to pass. The Bible say in 1 Samuel 26, he is talking to Saul. He says, the Lord rewards every man for his righteousness and faithfulness. Now he's talking to Saul on the second occasion where the Lord delivers Saul into his hands. And look at what David says. He says, the Lord rewards every man for his righteousness and faithfulness. The Lord delivered you into my hands today, but I would not lay a hand on the Lord's anointed. And look at the next statement. He says, as surely as I valued your life today, so may the Lord value my life and deliver me from all my trouble. I'm here to tell you, you got to look to God for your deliverance. Because when it's all said and done, we can help one another, we can pray for one another, we can encourage one another, but we don't hold the key to your destiny in our hands. There is only one who knows what he's doing in your life. There's only one who has begun the good work in you, and he alone is going to take you from where you are to where he has destined you to be. And David said, Saul, I'm not looking to you to bring me to the throne. I'm not looking for you to retire and for you to set up this transition. It's in God's hand. I didn't anoint myself the next king. God did it. So the Lord knows when and where and how he will bring it to pass. And I'm just looking to him to deliver me from all of my trouble. I want somebody to make up in your mind that you're going to be tenacious and hold on to the promise of God. Don't you cast away your confidence. Hebrews 10.35, don't cast away your confidence. Why? Because it will be richly rewarded. But then the next sentence says, you have need of patience. That after you've done the will of God, after you've lived your life in his presence, after you've stayed connected to his people, after you have done the will of God, you will receive what he has promised. He said, you need patience. Now, we're not the patient generation. Very little in our life encourages patience. We live in an efficiency-oriented time. We love getting it done faster, more conveniently. Praise God. I've said over the years, technology is a blessing, but it can also be a curse because God doesn't operate by the law of technology. God's not up to a quick work in your life. Sometimes the best things, you got to wait on them. The best things God will bring are not coming suddenly, they are not coming quickly, but they will come to pass. And don't be worried, even if things start getting worse, God knows when and how to reverse the worse. God knows how to deliver you out of your trouble. God knows how to put you at the right place at the right time for your appointment with deliverance and blessing. Don't believe me, ask that little lady who had spent everything she had trying to get well. The Bible says she had wasted all of her money trying to get better, and the physicians did all they could, but instead she got progressively worse. I want to tell somebody who's getting worse reports than you've ever gotten before, don't you call the ball game yet because you're not the referee. God knows what he's up to in your life. That lady was standing there, could have been full of despair and discouragement, but she heard Jesus was coming that way. And the Bible says she decided, I'm going to get in the press. Folk were pressed in around him while he was coming down the street. And she got in the press. Why did she get in? Because we're told she said to herself, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, why did she want to touch the hem of his garment? Because she is in a bleeding condition. She is hemorrhaging for 12 years. She is weak and anemic and pitiful. But the Bible says she was considered unclean in that cultural time and not supposed to be out in public. So she's got to be inconspicuous. But she said, all I got to do is get to Jesus. I don't need a face-to-face -face appointment. I'm not calling Jesus secretary. Say, I need to sit and talk to him. No, you tell him this is important. No, no, she said, I don't need a face to face with him. He got enough healing. He got enough anointing where if I just get behind him and if I get low and touch the hem 
of his garment. Do you understand that they wore robes in that day? Do you understand? She's not talking about just reaching down and touching something. She's talking about getting down on her knees and touching the hem of a robe. And she said, if I can just get a hold of him. The Bible says as soon as she did it, in the midst of a crowd, Jesus said, who touched me? And one of the disciples, I think I know who, <laughs> said, now all these people all around us, we can hardly get down the street, and you want to know who touched you. And he probably looked at one of the other disciples and just shook his head. Sometimes I don't know about this guy. No, no, Jesus said, no, y'all don't understand. These other folk are just touching me because they heard my reputation. They're just touching because they want to be close to me. They, they're touching, they just want to get close and have their cousin who don't know how to work the camera take a picture right quick. <laughs> just get in there. Come on, Jesus, just me and you, just me and Jesus. Hey, hey, hey. And the cousin fooling around, wait a minute, now how you do the wait? I, which button I push? <laughs> Jesus said, these are just autograph seekers. These are picture takers. These are folks who want to put their baby in my hands. He said, but somebody touched me with urgency. Somebody say, if you don't help me, there's no help for me. If you don't deliver me, there's no deliverance for me. If you don't heal me, there's no healing for me. Somebody touched me and said, God, I'm looking to you. My hope is in you. My expectation is from you. And Jesus said, I know it was that kind of touch because when they touched me, virtue went out of me. They made a spiritual withdrawal. And I felt something leave me. And I'm not budging till I find out who it was. And the little lady, perhaps afraid that she had done something wrong, she said it was me. But Jesus looked at her and he said, daughter, she's the only woman in the gospels that Jesus ever called daughter. He said, daughter, your faith has made you well. You held on to your destiny of healing until it came through. And your faith has made you well. I want to tell somebody, don't you throw away your faith. You can throw away your timeline when, you know, sometimes we had those deadlines. Now, Lord, I would really like you to move by the end of the month. Come on, let's be honest. You ever gave God a deadline? And then the deadline shoot by he let it shoot by to see now what you're going to do. Are you going to trust me anyhow? Are you going to believe me anyhow? Your timeline's messed up so that you can get a hold of mine. You say, well, just tell me when yours is. He said, when I'm ready. In the fullness of time. You said, that's not on my calendar. That's why. So that you can walk by faith and not by sight. I want somebody who's going through a challenging period where you don't know what's going on to understand that God wants you to maintain a consciousness of his presence, a connection with his people, and a confidence in his promise. For everything God promised, he will do. God is not a man that he should lie, not the son of man that he should repent. If he said it, he'll do it. If he promised it, he'll bring it to pass. Are you ready to confidently walk in the plan and promise of our Lord Jesus Christ? As we just heard from our teacher, Pastor Paul Shepard, here on Enduring Truth, following Jesus and living according to his word means that even when things aren't going as we planned, God's plans have not changed, and as we grow in our relationship with Him, rooted in His Word, bolstered in prayer, and strengthened in fellowship, we will...